one one thing about like black people and as opposed to Jewish people is that like we don't hold this, uh, even maybe Hispanic people as well. Black people, for whatever reason, don't hold the same dichotomy of like the support system, right? So like, Jewish people will spend the Jewish dollar, which is kind of taking that shit with a grain of salt because the Jewish dollar is just everywhere, right? But it's just for whatever reason, um, I feel like us as black people, bro, like we came together and and but you, we've talked about this before, right? And that's what we talked about earlier. Like you were talking about nigga, just because you're a black business, I'm not gonna support you because you black. And then you came on and he was like, Turkey Leg Hut, why the fuck y'all bashing Turkey Leg Hut? Y'all need to fuck I want to get into that. Go ahead. Y'all, y'all need to get with them because they black. And I was just like, wait, 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 wait. Like, I, I feel you on both points, right? Uh, but at the same time, though, it's just kind of like, you know. So, like, without true context, it's like, this is what I mean. You can't use the black card on me just because you've opened up a business. Like, if you have good business, I believe that your business will grow. What I typically see with us, though, is like once you do get a business or you see a business that grows, you begin to hear all the things about this business you may have not heard of other businesses when they were up and coming. So it's like, OK, do we really hate success? Do we not like success? Because when I see the turkey leg cut, hey, regardless of what you think about it, it's always packed. I enjoy the food. I think the the, the last time I went, it, you know, it, 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 it's what it is. I think they're running a great business. I'm knocking down a whole Cajun bowl by myself, bro. But I, I hear things like, and you did say the food food's good. You talked yeah. about it. Like, but I hear things like this, like uh, overpricing. Like when it comes to good black business or successful black business, oh, it's overpriced. It's this is that. It's like okay, shouldn't we be a patron of and support the businesses that represent? success success like they're keeping butts in the seat it's good food it's th and that's really where i'm coming from it's like okay and i said you know uh there's a married couple that owned the turkey leg hood it's like i just okay we are in a pickle as black people and we've talked we're talking about it right now it's like where do we stand like even you and you and me whom i think represent the majority of black men where's our representation Man, I'm going to be honest with you, my nigga. I don't think we represent the majority of black men because I think that both of us are, like, free thinkers and I feel like we're, like, logical thinkers and we, we, we there's a certain... And I, I, I really don't think that there's, like, a bunch of niggas that's out there like that. From Is Charleston White proving it? it Charleston White... <laughs> Good fucking segue. That's what great fucking segue. I was I was waiting on the segue. <laughs> like no no no. Char Charleston White to me is proven that like, and this is this is where we just gonna wholeheartedly disagree. Bro. Okay. <laughs> Charleston White to me, my nigga, is the most toxic nigga in the black community since like slavery, probably. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, I don't know, just like, it's not doing good. You're not doing anything good. Like, and you like to make it, like, so your, your talking point when it comes to Charleston White is that he creates conversation, right? Yeah. Right, that's, your, that's your talking point. <laughs> Here we are. Talking about the nigga. Right? But we're not talking about what he's talking about. We're talking about that nigga, which is a different type of conversation, right? We're not talking about, because do you think, and I and I say this shit, and we, we go back and forth with this online, bro. Do it, did Charleston White break news to you, or did he bring something new to your table, or like, is he saying something new that you haven't heard before? Nah, I think as a thirty-seven year old man born in the eighties, under lived through crack, you know, AIDS era. I totally understand what he's talking about. That's where he's coming from. I think the conversation in its perspective is new to the fifteen-year-old. What is he talking about? Well, I, I think what he's doing is this. When we were growing up, if someone joined the gang, like, you a sucker if you turn your back on that. You a sucker if you think that's not the way to go. Because at 14 years old, we're expecting, hear me out, that you're making manly decisions. At 14 years old, that the manly decision, you're going to pledge your life to something for your entire life. Yeah, 18, you got to be out the house. So, it, absolutely, at 14 years So, we, we, was, we, was, we was, you we know, it, we were conditioned. Yeah. What he's saying is, that's bullshit. You 14 years old going to join something that, as an adolescent that you'll continue serving as a grown man when you well, you should be serving your family. You should be serving your wife. You should be serving your children. You should be, here's where we should be thinking or where we should be going as black men because what has been the result? What has been the result so of this? A, do we need a Charleston White translator? 
Or like, why is this point I, lost on so so, many so so here's the beauty because no one that listens to this nigga gets that message. That's why you got a charm, God, so I can break this shit down. That's why we that's why we sitting here. Cause see, look, I can see all perspectives, and that's that's a gift I have. Now I have a stance. You may not like my stance, but I can see. A f- I want to I want to throw this in there because I know this is a favorite from people when I talk about relationships, men and women. Okay, I'm just put this. We'll come back out because we'll get stuck over there. This is why a lot of the things that I talk about when I'm talking about men and women get everybody riled up, men and women. They think that I'm somehow playing the middle. It's because I can I can understand the perspective because I have the experience and understanding to grow from something to see how it could work. I could totally see why this chick is married and running out on her husband to throw it back somewhere because I've got to have conversations with this type of chick several times. I could understand uh, uh, what a long-term relationship is like. I've been in that. I understand what it's like to have side chicks and they even hear the side chicks tell i could take this entire story because i want to grow and say to myself i want to understand every position here every piece on the chessboard i could see this in balance and and understand what this is even if i like this part a little more than that part so with kanye and tarston i put them in the same place it's like okay I'm not going to call these niggas up to be in my uh, top secret revolutionary team. You know, let me stop saying that for the, for they flag my shit. Like he ain't, f- well, he can't fly. <laughs> but, 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 but I can totally look at these people and for our people take what we should be getting out of it because it's just the total result of our condition. Anyway, Kanye and Charleston represent a spectrum and they do represent us because we were just up here talking conservative things, even though we don't agree with MAGA, that still would align with, I said this too, I said that the conservative white man is a heterosexual black man's best friend. Uh, I need to take a second to wrap my, let me just. I said that. 